Now, how will you find the relationship between the resistance uh, in a wheatstone switch? I mean the balanced wheatstone switch. Let P, Q, R and S represents the different resistors connected like this. This is the structure of a wheatstone switch and between the points, let's say this point B A, B, C, D. Between the points B and D, we connected a galvanometer. Now, there are certain things you have to notice in here. <coughs> Current always move from the positive terminal of the cell to the negative terminal. Mm -hmm. So, the current starts from here. So, the direction of current will be like this. Let I be the magnitude of the current. Now, see, this point A is a junction. So, A current, let's say I1 flow through the point, flow through the resistor P. The rest of the current, see, from I, I1 flow to the resistor P. So, the current, rest of the current will be I minus I1. Clear. This I minus I1 moves through the resistor R. Now, at the junction B, I1 will reach at the junction B. Now, let's say a current, this also is a junction. So, I1 will split to IG. Let's say IG is the current moving through the galvanometer. Now, from I1, IG moves through uh, this galvanometer. Rest of the current will be I1 minus IG. Clear. So, I1 minus IG will move through Q. See, here also it is IG. See, this branch B, BD is occupied by IG. Now, this I minus I1 can't go to this branch. Okay, that is BD. Only one current can, can enter into one branch. So, this I minus I1 can't go to this branch because already IG is moving from top to bottom. Now this I minus I1 and IG will meet at the junction D and it will move as you have to add these two currents that is I minus I1 plus IG. So this current will move through the resistor S. Also this current can't, this current, this current can't move to the resistor Q because there is already a current I minus IG coming from B to C. Again, these two will combine at C and what will you get if you add these two? See, I minus I1 plus IG plus I1 minus IG. You have to add these two currents so that IG and IG will get cancelled. I1, I1 is again get cancelled, will again get cancelled. So, the current I. So, to the uh, current will enter as I to the point A and it will come back as I itself from the point C. So, this is a, uh, so this is the way we represent current through each branch. Okay. You have to check the, always check the law of conservation of charges. Okay. Now, we have to apply Kirchhoff's law in here. We have to apply the Kirchhoff's uh, loop rule. For that, let us consider a, a you can take any mesh, any closed mesh. Let's take, consider, that is, consider the mesh or the loop Mesh should always be closed. A, B, D, A. A, B, D, A. Now, you have to move as you, in, in, in whatever way you write the letters. So, A, B, D, A means you have to move in this direction. A, B, D, A. That means in the clockwise direction. So, first you have to move from A to B. See, in this direction. Remember, the, if we take, if we move from A to B, we are moving along the direction of current. See, the direction of current is in this direction. I1 is from A to B. 
and our mesh is also from A to B. So direction, let's see, direction along the current, along the current is taken as positive, as negative, clear. This, this is a shortcut you can use to solve the Kirchhoff second law to, to uh, find, find the uh, ratio of resistance in the Wheatstone splits that is direction along the current should be taken as negative. So from A to B we are moving along the direction of current. So first you have to multiply this current with the resistor. So I1 P. We are taking the mesh ABDA. ABDA I1 into P. That is you have to always multiply the current with the resistor. Now as I said I am moving along the direction of current so I have to put a minus sign. Now from B to, B to D, B to D again we are moving along the direction of current. So first you have to multiply the current with the resistor Ig into G here G represents the galvanometer resistor. Again you are moving along the direction of current so you have to put a minus sign. Now AB is over BD now DA, DA. First you have to multiply the current with the resistor. So I minus I1 times R. Now see you are moving from D to A and the current is from A to D. So that will be plus. Against the direction of current is taken as positive. So that will be zero. And what you have to do is take all the negative terms to the right side. So I minus I1 R equal to I1 P plus IgG. Clear. Let's call that as equation number one. Now you can take any other mesh. Let's say B C D P. Consider consider the mesh B C D P. Now first you have to move from B to C. B to C if you are moving along the direction of current first you have to multiply the current with the resistor that is I1 minus IG times Q as you are moving along the current you have to put the minus. Now from C, 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 D. This the mesh is B, C, D, B. Now C, D, C, D. So first you have to multiply the current. Sorry. I minus I1 plus I, G times the resistance in here is S. Now you are moving from C to D which is against the direction of current. So you can put a plus sign. Now from D to B you are against the direction of current. So plus IG into G. That equal to 0. That loop is finished. So what you have to do is. Let me erase this. Now take this negatives, negative to the right side. So that you will get I minus I1 plus IG times S is S plus IG into G equal to taking this to the right you will get I1 minus IG times Q. Let's call this as equation number 2. Now we are considering a balanced Wheatstone split. Balanced Wheatstone split means there is no current through the galvanometer. There is no current through the branch BD. That is IG is equal to 0. That is the condition for balanced Wheatstone's bit. Wheatstone's bridge. So the equation 1 become. See this is the equation. This IG is 0. So you can write. I minus I1 times R is equal to I1 P plus this is equal to 0, 0 times G. 
Now that equation will become I minus I1 into R is equal to I1P. Let's call that as equation number 3. Now what will happen to the equation 2? In equation 2 also, the since the bridge is balanced, IG is equal to 0. So this will become I minus I1 plus 0 times S plus 0 into G, this is equal to 0 into G, equal to I1 minus 0 times Q. Simplifying this, you will get I minus I1 times S, this term will become 0, equal to I1 Q. Let's call that as equation number 4. Now, if you divide the equation 3 with equation 4, if you divide 3 with equation 4, what you get? You have to divide the left hand side. That is I minus I1 into R by I minus I1 into S is equal to I1P divided by I1Q. You can cancel this one and this one also I1 will get cancelled. So that R by S will be P by Q. Or in other words, this one has many forms. You can write this as P by Q equal to R by S. That is one form. Or you can write PS is equal to RQ, PS is equal to RQ, or P by, you can take this R to the left, P by R equal to Q by S. This one is the general form. That is ratio in the left side, that is P by R will be equal to Q by S. So this is the condition for balance to be Wheatstone's bridge. So using Wheatstone's bridge, if you know the three resistors and if the bridge is balanced, you can find the fourth resistor using this equation. Clear.